My name is Yoshiro Yamamaki. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to speak to you about my experiences of the damage caused by the atomic bomb. I was in the second grade of elementary school. Japan started the Pacific War. The war was still going on when I entered the sixth grade, and it was during summer vacation of that year that the atomic bomb dropped, was dropped on Nagasaki. I was exposed to the atomic bombing while at home, some 2.2 kilometers from the site of the explosion. As a parent, I am 78 years old. As, uh, and uh, the same age, the current emperor of Japan. To be precise, the emperor's birthday is December 23, 1933. And uh, I was born six, day af six days after. If you, to, if you have a chance to see uh, emperors of Japan on TV or newspaper, please remember to my story. Let me first tell you about my family back then. My father, who was 47 years old, worked as an engineer for the Mitsubishi Electric Corporation Nagasaki Works. My mother was 37 years old, and there were seven children, including myself. My older brother was 14 years old and a third year junior high school student. My twin brother and I were 11 years old and in sixth grade at elementary school. I had two younger sisters and two younger brothers as well, making for a total of nine people in the family. Let me explain about the copies you have been given. This is a map of the, of the atomic bombing hypercenter area at that time. The red line shows the route that my brother and I took in immediately after the bombing when we went from our house, which is marked with X to the place where our father's factory was located. I went there because my father had not returned home. This is, this is my house. Please look at this photograph. This boy was exposed to the atomic bombing at the the point on the map where the blue mark is. He had been riding his bicycle while delivering mail for the post office. At the moment of the explosion, the skin melted from his back, leaving, leaving it uh, look like a crushed tomato. He was thrown through the air with his bicycle and lost consciousness. His name is Mr. Taniguchi. I'm sure you can see that my house was just outside the two kilometer radius in which this boy was. The only reason I didn't suffer the same horrible wounds as he did was that I had gone to the back part of my house four or five minutes before the bomb fell. <coughs> I will talk more about this later. On the, on the morning of the atomic bombing, only my father and three of us boys woke up at our home. My mother had taken our four younger brothers and sisters 
evacuate to the family home in the countryside. After getting breakfast, our father went off to work, to work as usual. My older brother, the junior high school student, went off to the weapons factory where he was helping out as part of the mobilized student forces. The two of us twins stayed at home because it was summer vacation and until just before 11 o'clock we were out on the veranda. We went uh, we, uh, when we got hungry, we went to the sitting room at the back of the house. And while we were sitting around the table, a whitish blue light across the room, then came a roar that seemed to shake the whole house. The two of us got down on the tatami mat and covered our eyes and ears and, and noses with our fingers, just like we had been taught to do. While we were in that position, Prasta and other devilies came for falling, uh, for falling down on top of us. I thought that a bomb had directly hit our property and that we would probably be very alive there. The falling debris didn't continue falling for all that long, however. After a few minutes, the falling debris became more infre infrequent and while lying there, the voices of people in the neighborhood screaming and crying reached my ears. When, a while remaining down on the ground, I lifted my head up and looked around the, uh, to find everything completely changed. Almost all the furniture had been mangled and tossed around. The walls had come crumbling down, and in every room, tatami mat floors were covered with dirt and debris, with furniture scattered all about. The roof had been blown off as well, and we could see the sky. The pillars and walls were embedded with large numbers of sharp-edged fragments of broken glass. The other houses in the neighborhood were in the same state of destruction. Across the harbor, the central part of the city was covered in the cloud of dust. The two of us evacuate to the bomb shelter in our yard, where we waited for our father and our older brother to come back, come home. About an hour had passed when my brother arrived home from his factory. At that time, he said that it was too dangerous to stay in that tiny bomb shelter and that we should move to the larger one nearby. That, that bomb shelter, which was like a tunnel carved into the cliffside, was filled with mothers and their children. The children who, who had been showered in the heat rays while outside had suffered harm to any exposed skin. Other children were crying because their bodies had been stabbed by shards of grass and 
other fragments that have been thrown by the blast. If my twin brother and I had left our veranda to go to the sitting room five minutes later, we most likely would have suffered horrible wounds from the heat rays and blasts. We spent entire night worrying anxiously for our father to come back. By the next morning, however, he still hadn't returned. At that point, the three of us brothers headed off to find him. Please look at the map you are given. By looking at the red line, you can see that we walked from a point about two kilometers, two kilometers from the hypocenter to a place only 500 meters away from it. Of course, we didn't have any idea that the bomb, bomb dropped had been an atomic bomb, nor that my father's factory was so close to the site where it had exploded. As we continue, continued on, the damage grew worse and worse. The houses at the roadside had all burned to the ground, and the trees, trees and electric poles were scorched, although they remained standing. The factories on the other side of the river now look like masses of crushed wire with only the largest of the, their columns remaining standing. There are many dead bodies among the debris returning the roads. The faces, arms, and legs had thrown up making them look like black rubber dolls. When our shoes touched these bodies, the skin would come peeling off, just like that, or that of over an overripe peach expo exposing the white fat underneath. There were many dead bodies floating in the river as well. We were drawn to one that belonged to a young woman of about 18 or 19, from, his, from which a long white cross belt was dragging behind. Looking closer, I saw that this white belt was really her intestines which were protruding from the side of her abdomen. Feeling nauseous, we turned our eyes away and hurried off again in the direction of our father's factory. When we had come within about a hundred meters of our father's factory, my brother suddenly screamed out and stood paralyzed with fear. I looked over his shoulder to see a boy of six or seven who had died with something white hanging out of his mouth. 